Hello to yourself, everyone. My name is Grio Horat, and welcome to our new Elliott Wave analysis surfing the Elliott Waves, where I will look at some of the most important developments for this week. This video has been brought to you by Orbex. I will look at the Euro, Aussie, Gold, SP 500, and Pound Yen. Now, uh, as you know, Euro dollar is still uh, bearish, it's trading very deeply here when we are looking at a bigger. Uh, bigger scale here. I think that there is room for parity. There you have the 78.6% retracement of this uh, leg up from 2000 lows to 2008 highs. So we are seeing this downtrend still in a corrective fashion, possibly even approaching some supports by the end of this year. So for now, there is still a very big gap, as you know, between ECB and very hawkish Fed. So this is the main driver for the euro weakness of course there is also a situation in ukraine then that have a very strong bearish impact on economy in europe and that's what is driving this market currently to the downside however i think that um, based on sentiment we are seeing a lot of extreme moves here uh, a lot of pessimism so at some point this cycle will also come to an end and change and i think that this could be the case by the end of the year now if we look here on the smaller time frames notice that i'm observing wave c to the downside right it's the final lack of that higher degree bearish corrective price action so even this wave c well at some point should be made by five waves before we can say that this uh, downturn has come to an end so here we have this detailed wave count of this wave c as you know the the most strongest wave within the impulsive sequence is usually wave free okay so we are seeing a very strong drop here for since uh, may of 2021 so this bear market is now for wave free is in play for almost one year so what we will be looking is expecting a rally okay now when we are approaching those new lows so we are we will be aware of a rally but then just keep in mind that there can be more weakness coming after that fourth wave uh, looking at the smaller time frames here on the four hour uh, looks like that this wave five final leg of a wave three is also still in play so watch out for potential more weakness maybe that's now already a wave four degree in place so there is room for one of three maybe by the end of the week however the fomc maybe could be a trend changer here uh if maybe there will be some disappointment and because market is very hawkish uh, very hawkish expectations so if they will not deliver this what market expects of course the us dollar may quickly uh, find resistance now let's take a look on aussie well finally uh, bank of australia has uh, turned hawkish they have increased interest rates slightly more than expected uh, however Aussie is not seeing the strand that maybe some would expect uh, but that's fine with me I mean we are still observing this corrective price action uh, to have a little bit room for more weakness to correct lower so before we go to the smaller time frames let me just show you what I'm looking at here on the monthly chart well you have these five waves down right so these five waves down is finished because the market broke above this trend line in fact this has occurred with an impulsive personality so i think that's a wave a and that we will see more upside after this wave b is finished also you have potential head and shoulders bottom formation here so you are now approaching this lower side uh, of this previous left shoulder so there is some supports to 300 pips away uh, but so far as i said there is room for slightly more weakness because uh, we need we need at least five waves down from this recent swing highs so if we look at this um this four hour structure here well notice that that was wave one you had a wave two nice extended three sub wave uh, sorry five sub waves for wave three and now you are in a wave for retracement so there can be some choppy price action the ideal resistance if we assume that wave three maybe could already bottom because we are after all at 161.8 percent well then the fib level that we should pay attention on is the 38.2 percent and this comes in very nicely at the former wave four here of a smaller degree so i think that that's a perfect resistance for a new further sell-off here on Aussie dollar so for now despite hawkish Arab, i think that um, 
we will have to wait a little bit longer before we may finally see a tradable low okay but there are planning to include to to uh, to lift rates even more in upcoming months and obviously at some point this will also have a positive impact in my opinion on Aussie dollar but for now we are not there yet there is still an issue with China you have the COVID lockdowns um, you also see the Chinese yuan is falling sharply so we have to see this trend also slowing down before Aussie could uh, attract some buyers here now let's take a look also on gold now gold is um, still trapped in a higher degree higher degree corrective price action here it could be a way for in a triangle maybe even in a flat here uh, so that's a daily chart uh, so the idea was if you are, were following our analysis the idea was that we were looking for the third leg of decline either for a wave c maybe even for a wave free of c because in a flat formation the structure is three three five right so for now i think that there can be a little bit of more weakness here you have some very interesting supports the first one is retesting grid already at 1850 the next deeper one and quite important is at uh, uh, 1783 so we will see if the market can see uh, move to the downside into this area but the whole idea is that we should be very careful as soon as the market will approach the lower side of the range because if this is really a triangle this choppy price action in both directions um, could actually continue okay so we are not seeing any change of a trend we were just looking for a temporary sell-off which is now in play but we are aware that there can be some supports coming so i think that the easiest part for prediction for that sell-off is already gone so we have to wait a little bit longer now to see what's uh, to see more price action and potential new opportunities ahead now let's take a look also on the s p 500 now we are still bullish longer term on the s p 500 i'm aware that there that at some point there will be a very big massive pullbacks maybe that's already the case but so far i want to stick with an uptrend looking at here at the weekly chart i am i am here observing potential way for very nice support is around 4000 so that's not a far away in fact the current drop already uh, moved beyond the previous swing lows so if we look at daily chart here you can see that we have some very nice support here around 4000 very strong psychological level you are already in a wave c right hunting a new low so there can be some support not far away of course further weakness is also still very possible but i am aware that there can be some bounce coming uh, even if just temporary okay there can be some rally coming it, it will depend what kind of a structure what kind of a bounce we will see will there be a free wave movement will there be a five wave recovery okay so here i have this four hour chart notice the substructure for a wave c you can already count five waves down so always when you have five waves just be aware that market could be coming to an end the current direction okay so watch out for potential rally the first resistance is at 4300 so that's a key for price action for the next few maybe even few weeks so as long as we are below that level where there is a risk for further sell-off potentially even towards this second target which is around 3900 but if this level is broken let's say with impulsive price action okay then i think that there will be more upside coming with potential opportunities after pullbacks okay so i'm still on a sideline here very neutral very, pa very patient but i am aware of potential of potential uh, supports in upcoming weeks generally speaking i think that let's say in the second part of 2022 there can be a lot of shift of the trends that we have recently seen cryptocurrencies were down dollar was up yeah, significantly and stocks are down so i think that sooner or later these cycles will again approach their end and ideally we will see a shift in trend as i said in the second half of this year now finally let's take a look on pound yen now pound yen uh, in my opinion is is going to complete this five wave sequence uh, from that 2020 pandemic low so we are at very strong resistance it's also the 61.8 percent of this previous strong five wave drop so maybe the whole rally from 2016 lows is coming into very strong level of course it's very tough call to say that then is going back to 2016 levels i always want to look at the markets 
and uh, with my analysis by step by step approach, meaning that I will look for minimum expectations. But always when there is a five wave movement, what is really the minimum expectation? Well, it's a three wave setback because that's how market works. It will make five waves, it will make three waves setback, setback. Again, five waves, another three wave setback. So for now, I want to stay focused on this recovery. There's a five wave movement with the recent break out of a triangle meaning that you are in the final stages of this impulse. So looking at the smaller time frame, here's a daily chart. Notice that this break out of a triangle was very equal, very similar compared to the distance of this wave P. So usually that's triangle measurement target. And I call it very significant, especially when you see such a strong reversal away from that area. More importantly, this reversal appears to be like an impulse on a smaller time frame. So here we have this um, here we have this uh, four hour time frame. Notice that we can count five waves up within higher degree impulse. And then you have this, as I said, bearish impulsive turn. So this kind of a structure is the most important one whenever you want to call a top or bottom in any market. Okay, this confirms a change in trend. Because there are no overlaps, it means that bears are very strong. And usually the first bearish impulse will cause another bearish impulse after a rally. And what we are seeing now, well, a rally. And ideally, this rally is very similar to the previous, uh, to the previous uh, correction that when we were tracking uptrend, uptrend. And you can clearly see that this could also be a very nice potential hand and shoulders formation as well. So I'm looking for more weakness. I would not be surprised if we retest this neckline, but when neckline is broken, well, that's usually the confirmation for much uh, further uh, sell off here. So I'm watching Pantian for this week. I think it could be very interesting, especially if stocks will not be able to recover. I also see dollar yen moving into some extreme oversold conditions. It's struggling around 130, so maybe this will be key level, key resistance to the FOMC. Uh, but as I said earlier, if they will not deliver what markets expect, meaning very hawkish view, well, dollar could very easily come back down, and this could also have an impact on other yen currencies as well. Traders, thank you very much for attention. I hope that you enjoyed this video and talk to you soon. Bye.